Previously on The Final Pitch. Why the celebrities are selling their used stuff online. Do they need the money? No. The business model, I don't, I don't like it. The evidence suggests that you do not have a scalable business here. Thank you for your comments and thank you. From Coins, Paymongo, and UBX, we're putting a, a unified term sheet on the table, which is uh, $150,000, and then we would like to get 30% uh, equity in the business. Um, is it okay for you guys to make it 20%? not worth it. Okay. We are accepting them. Come hustle with us. <laughs> yes! Nice. This week, we meet the young and dynamic food entrepreneur, Avin Ong. And day one of the pitches continues. My name is John Aguilar, and I'm a serial entrepreneur based in Manila, Philippines. I've gathered a formidable cast of business and industry leaders on the lookout to fund and support the country's rising tech startups. Wei Zhou, CEO of Coins.ph. Francis Plaza, co-founder and CEO of PayMongo. Avin Ong, founder and CEO of Fredly Group of Companies. Amor McClung, co-founder of Geyser McClung. Rose Ong, senior executive vice president and COO of Welcome Depot. And John Yanuschak, president and CEO of UBX. Many will try, but only a few will make it to the final pitch. Avin Ong's success as an entrepreneur came with his fair share of early challenges. Although he worked his way up the corporate ladder, he soon left his job and established his own business. The rest, as they say, is history. I actually grew up in a low-income or poor family. Yeah, my father died when I was um, still inside my mom's womb. I, I actually didn't have the chance to, to meet him personally. I grew up as a scholar since kindergarten all the way to college. And I started my very first business, seven years old, selling fruit shakes in the wet market of Caloocan City. At the same time, I was helping my family assemble hangers, and we sell all these hangers to the Divisoria Mall. I was a full-time college student. I was in a hurry to finish my degree just so I will be able to um, start earning and helping my family financially. I actually started my very first job even before my graduation ceremony in De La Salle University. A few years after I started my first job in Deutsche Bank, I decided to pursue my MBA degree in the Ateneo Graduate School of Business. During my last year in Deutsche Bank, my family encouraged me to resign because, you know, in a traditional Chinese family, parents would usually push you to create your own business because um, in a traditional Chinese family, you cannot just be an employee forever. And that was the time I decided to put up my food business. It was a little bit difficult for me to just move forward, resign, and start from scratch again. Looking back after eight years, I must say I have no regrets. It's actually so fulfilling to be able to provide thousands of jobs to the Filipinos. I would say one of the reasons why I decided to put up food business is that I love eating. And at the same time, I have to admit that it's a very random idea. We actually started this company with just 5 million pesos. And who would have thought that right now, Fred Lee owns 250 branches nationwide in just eight years with more than 2,000 employees nationwide. And what's so interesting about this is that we also employ people with disabilities. So um, even PWDs, they get to work with us. Friendly Group of Companies was established November 2014. We got inspirations from the names of my father and my mother. Uh, my father's name is Alfred, so we got a Fred. And my mother's name is Shirley, so we got a Lee. The reason why we name it after my dad and my mom is because um, all these achievements that we have right now are because of them, because they trained us well, they taught us well, so we want them to be remembered generations after generations. 
we opened our very first branch in Quezon City in November 30, 2014. We started with Japanese restaurants and then later on we were invited by different principals abroad to bid for their franchise rights here in the Philippines. And then later on 2017, we opened our very first branch of Macau Imperial Tea. And we're very fortunate, um, we're, we're very blessed to be loved and supported by the Filipinos. In just five years, we were able to open 230 branches. And that gives us the name of being the biggest and dominant player in the milk tea industry. There were a lot of struggles because I have no background in the food service industry. So people would always ask me, who was your consultant? I would probably tell them, Google. Yeah, so if you don't know anything, you just Google it. I was the employee number one, and I was the only employee. I acted like the HR manager. I drafted my own contract for employment agreement. I drafted everything on my own. I was the branch manager. I do the cashier reading. I was once a dispatcher. I was once a server. Customers shouted at me. So all these things I've experienced. Avin, as a business partner, he's very straightforward. He knows what he wants and uh, he gets what he wants. He's a visionary, you know. I actually saw Friendly Group grew, you know, uh, with just a young age in the F&B industry. It became an industry leader. It, it became such an inspiration to a lot of SMEs na with a simple brand, with a simple product, it can grow to like 250 branches and more. And I think that's what's interesting about FGC because others were resting during the pandemic. FGC kept on working, kept on pushing the boundaries like there's no tomorrow. And I think that's one of the reasons why it's still growing today. And that's why more brands are approaching us to become acquired. There were eight brands under the Fredly group of companies. So we have Mitasu Charcoal Yakiniku. Well, it was rebranded to Mitasu Yakiniku. So that was our Japanese Yakiniku brand. We also have our Nabe, Japanese Isakaya and Hot Pot. So it's, it's basically a hot pot restaurant, but we are the only hot pot chain that offers you more than 21 types of soup bases. We also have Macau Imperial Tea. So of course, it's a milk tea place and we want Macau Imperial Tea to be the Starbucks in the milk tea industry. That's why in Macau, you will see that our stores are usually big because we want people to not just grab and go, but to actually spend time with us. So we have 107 co-working. That's actually our co-working concept because I started as a startup. We want to give people that environment where they can also brainstorm and establish their own business. We acquired 100% shares of New York Fries and Dips from the previous owner. We believe that the brand has so much potential and capacity. So we agreed to acquire 100% of the brand and now we're growing it. We have Liang Crispy Roll, a brand we got from Shanghai. It's a go-to snack bar. We opened just last year and in a few months, we were able to open four branches and many more to come. We recently launched our new brand. It's Happy Truck, so it's a food truck. In whatever events, we drive our truck to your event and we serve you the best milk tea, the best crispy roll, and the best fries. It was also during the pandemic that we opened our Kosaku International Buffet and we have the biggest and longest conveyor there um, for you to get your favorite food for hot pot and yakiniku. We recently opened our cafe. It's a Japanese meets French cafe concept. It's our very first luxury brand. It's Cafe Kitsune all the way from Paris. As part of our um, vision to go IPO in the next three to five years, we are now acquiring more brands from abroad. For us to be able to grow up to 250 branches nationwide in just eight years, of course, I would say that this is a very fast-paced organization. We act really, really fast. Yeah, we don't accept excuses, reasons, or alibis. We just have to do things really quick to address solutions instead of telling people challenges. The reason why I decided to join the Final Page Tech Edition is that um, I believe that the future of business is all about technology, it's all about digitalization, it's all about automation. So I find Tech Edition very interesting because I feel like this is the best time for me to work with an individual who is an expert for technology, not me, but somebody else, and we're gonna bring all these things into reality. I believe that I am the best partner or one of the best partners for startups because I understand them. 
I was once a startup, so I know very well the pain points of being a startup. And at the same time, I would be able to coach them on how to bring a startup to where a friendly group of companies is right now. Up next, I am Kenneth, the founder and CEO of Pihiram. We are the very first human ETM. I have a question uh, and challenge me on this one. Access to cash should be affordable and accessible, right? But isn't shipping it making access to it more expensive? First to Pitch is a budding startup focused on delivering the cheapest and fastest cash transactions for OFWs. Hello, OJ. Hello, Kenneth. Hi, Shan. Hi, yeah, Jan. Good to be back. Oh, wow. OJ, nice to see you. Looking good. We had you join us uh, season five. That was three years ago. Yeah, that was 40 pounds ago, man. <laughs> <laughs> you look good, man. I mean, we had you join us. You were pitching your startup representing Cebu. And uh, now you've brought along your buddy also representing Cebu. The final pitch had so much impact. We have grown to the level that we are right now thanks to the final pitch. Okay, so Kenneth, I think the bar has been set high and right now you, you seem to be his protege. Talk to me about how OJ has prepared you for this moment. Yeah, all like preparations, doing the pitch and also feasting with cameras. This is a new thing to us, uh, but the best thing is we're ready. I'm rooting for you guys. You're up next. Good luck. Thank you, Jan. Thank you, Jan. You say, yeah, represent. I am Kenneth, the founder and CEO of Pihiram. We are the very first human ETM, remittances, money changer, and a wallet. Our goal is to serve OFWs and Filipinos to save time and money while creating economic opportunities to people looking for extra income. We're currently looking for partnership and at least $200,000 for safe and convertible notes. This is what happened when Odette hit in Central Visayas, especially in Cebu. It was very bad. I was lining up to banks or ETMs just to withdraw cash and waited for hours. Similarly, in remittance center, I waited for hours to send money. It was very difficult. I was frustrated, but patient enough because there's no other way around. But these are not situational. These are common problems to these financial services. With current setup, people like me experience numerous problems like higher fees, low foreign exchange conversion rates, cash and availability, plus the travel expenses. In short, we waste time and money. At Pihiram, we have a game-changing solution. By involving ordinary people, our Pihiram partners, to process transactions like remittances, cash withdrawals, and more. Our bidding platform allows Pihiram partners to set their own competitive rates to conduct international and local transfer. We're currently providing services like local and international remittances, while our solution can facilitate cash withdrawals, foreign exchange, e-wallets, payments, and pabayad po. We are now available in US, Thailand, and Philippines with more than 11,000 users. So let me show you how it works. Instead of me going out using Pihiram, I just need to create a withdrawals request, select the shipping option, either pick up, deliver, deposit to a bank or e-wallet, select a location, input an amount, authenticate, and send. Now I receive four proposals from our partners. I can choose what is cheapest and fastest option. I can communicate to our Pihiram partners and manage requirements and complete the transaction. We leverage our Pihiram partners' cash to process my withdrawals request. In return, our partner receives an e-wallet value. This is the same for local and international remittances. So how do we earn? For every transaction processed by our partners, Pihiram take only 20% of the transaction fee and the rest goes to our partner. So what sets us apart from the rest of the competition is we are the only one offering cash delivery. And the good thing is our customers don't need to go out. We are the only one offering multiple options of fees, which our customers can save up to 50%. We are the only one with partners dependent, foreign exchange rate, and also transaction fees, which our customers can choose what is best and cheapest. And the best thing is we are open all the time. Thank you. Can I call my partner, OJ Lopez? How long have you guys been at this for? Uh, Since October, October 2021. October 20, okay, so this is kind of new. So 11,000 users, so these are downloads. Unregistered users. Yeah, registered users. How many active users out of the 11,000? Uh, right now, it's, we have around 500 active users. Okay, and your revenue to date? Uh, we're able to process almost a million uh, transaction pesos uh, just the last month. Yeah, I'd like to understand 
most of your clients, they're unbanked, right? So your partner has to deliver the cash to their homes? Uh, our customers uh, both and bank and banks. So basically, okay. for example, me, uh, a Union Bank user, I just need to cash in using Union Bank and then we will give equivalent credit in PHRAM. And then from that, I can now work withdrawals request and then give that money also to the partner. I have a question uh, and challenge me on this one. Isn't shipping cash and your goal should be like access to cash should be affordable and accessible, right? But isn't shipping it making access to it more expensive? Right now, in terms of the shipping, as we follow the standard, for example, with other uh, logistic providers, in which in three kilometers we just give at least 45 pesos and an additional per kilometer charge, uh, which is again uh, pretty much convenient, also and understandable to other to, to these people, because if they need to go or travel to the nearest branch, they still need to spend 100 or 500 pesos. Yeah, I have a question. Um, I believe that you're operating in different countries. So um, once you have issues or concerns from the Anti-Money Laundering Council here in the Philippines? Uh, yeah, we had discussions already with the BSP and also like working with our OPS certifications. And right now it's working also with uh, other legal uh, certifications in U.S. But most in U.S. is they did not require us a remittance uh, certifications. They just require us an opinion letter because we did not move the money from U.S. back to the Philippines. We only leverage people's money in the Philippines to process withdrawals from other countries. How do you get the cash to the person? So I'm your partner in the Philippines. Uh, I give out $100 worth of remittance. How do I get reimbursed? Our reimbursement is through the banks. We want really that our partners can save also in terms of fees. So we, we have like zero fees for our partners. And then they can go also to our cash out outlets like our remittances, banks. While there's been tremendous uptick in digital payments, uh, the reality is that cash payments are still substantial. I'm not going to make an offer to invest. My, my offer is to sit down with you guys and, and learn a little more. If nothing else, I think there is probably a way to help you guys test this at a larger scale. We have tens of thousands of agents, of cash agents, that would represent partners for this. We support carded transactions, which I think is very relevant for your target market. And uh, obviously we can provide regulatory cover. We're a regulated company. Same as John, I think we can have a chat about is there a better way to solve this issue than to uh, sh have runners? Because I think just the concept of runners with cash and envelopes is just kind of a scary thought. You guys are on something. You were able to acquire uh, 11,000 users, so that really is something. So that's impressive. I think you just need to go somewhere first principle where how do you move money fast and cheap and sort of the basic needs of your target market. So I guess in the end, um, would be more, I guess, to add to the offers of both gentlemen, would love to be a resource for you also. We appreciate all your offers and we would love to work with you. We believe that this can be a big thing uh, in the next few years and thank you. Having these brands partner with us is just very beneficial for us and, and I think that we would be able to go to the next level with those kinds of partnerships. I lived through sort of like China's evolution from a cash society to a cashless society that I've kind of seen the efficacy of using a mobile wallet. Yeah, I, I, I guess for me, I hear all that. Uh, we've partnered with Chinese fintech firms and w one of the biggest lessons that we've had is that there's a lot to learn and a lot to take from that, but the Philippines is not China. Still cash, but it's the last mile, but now you've acquired them. And then the next step is into the wallet or, or, or whatever it is that you're doing with, uh, with like a digital payment. Up next. Macari's Smart Learning was actually built to uh, specifically adapt to what the company or school needs. I don't think you need 500000 I don't think I'm maybe investing financially. I don't think I'm the right investor because to be honest with you, I'm a big fan of face-to-face -face learning. Next to Pitch is a teacher whose passion for education led him to establish a learning management system that provides an intensive online learning experience. Hi, Andrew. Hello, John. You are in the education space. You quit your job because you wanted to focus on this platform that you have built 
Actually, before I thought I was gonna die a teacher, like th th this has been my profession and this is a passion I want to take as I get old. But life has drawn me to a different direction and put me to business, but still in education. So still, this is a larger space, but I want to take the passion into. Okay, so you're up next. I hope you teach the investors a thing or two. Good luck. Thank you, thank you, Zion. Hello everyone, I am Andrew Maniakop, the CEO and co-founder of Macarius Smart Learning. And I'm here today to ask you $500,000 in exchange of 20% of our stake so that we will expand our business, not just here in the Philippines, but in Dubai as well. For eight years, I have traveled all around the Philippines and uh, has taught different students from different schools and universities. I wanted to prepare them for the board exam, but based on my experience, I never had the best approach so that I can cater to all of them. Macarius Smart Learning was actually built to uh, specifically adapt to what the company or school needs. These are some of the LMS features that we have. An integrative video lecture, which is interactive. This is actually personalized because we want to show a front row experience to students. That when they are at home, they can just actually watch the video. In the video, there will be questions. And at the questions, they can answer and you can get results right away. We also have uh, what we call as the schedule and DIY exams. And these exams are actually filled with metrics so that we can measure how the student take the exam, how long they take every exam, and what particular specification they are bad at and good at. We have also what we call as a compliance tracker. We want to give uh, positive reinforcement to each student and we want to know if they're really complying or not. So you should have a metric of how they really grow and we want to gamify it so that they can kind of compare themselves to others. There's a huge market in, in education, especially in learning. In fact, worldwide we have $218 billion and in the Philippines we have $2.4 billion. There are 70.3 million students and employees alike, which is under training. And within that $2.4 billion, 56% comes from corporate trainings. Compared to the least, which is review centers, but even if review centers is the lowest percentage, the market is still huge because it's $58.2 million. We were uh, a company at 2020. By today, uh, 2022, we have earned about $160,000 with almost 5,000 students and 49% profit margin. This is how we earn. We have three revenue streams. We have web and app development. We have recurring subscription from students and employees. And we have also app customizations. So we are committed to being the catalyst of innovation in the Philippines. And I hope you will support us and be with us as we go through this journey in life. So thank you for listening. Uh, for the q and may call my partner. Who is actually using it? Um, Who's paying for it? We have uh, four clients right four now. Four clients, the, yeah. The, the four ones I've shown you, from physical therapy and occupational therapy, pharmacy, accountancy, and... Uh, so these are business customers? Yes. And Okay, and, they have, and they're the ones who are providing the 5,000 students? Yes, yes. And the 5,000 students are paying, a t it, per student, it's a $10 per year or per month? It's per SEM. Because per in the board exam, they only use like about four to six months before they shift to another group of students again because the board exam is twice a year. So oh, every, okay. every board exam, we have new set of students and all of these students are paying customers. So what we experience is that with, the, with these four clients alone, we're actually surviving as a company and we're, we're actually on the positive side. And we're looking into how we could grow if we will have more review center clients, more corporate training clients in the schools and universities. Yeah, because it seems to me that you have recurring revenue through the subscriptions. Very nice. Yes. Okay. You have implementation. I mean, you called them license fees. Maybe I'd call it something else if yeah. I was raising money to impress investors. But in a way, you are covering your cost of implementation or acquisition. And you've proven it with these business clients. So I don't think you need 500,000 personally. Um, and, uh, and, and, and I'm not the right investor for you. Uh, but if you are going to give up some equity in what you're building or you're trying to accelerate it, my humble advice is I, I would take it from somebody who can deliver that business to you. So you know that when you hire this manpower, the demand is already there. Yeah. This is a very difficult and big problem to solve. And you know, I really 
root for your success because we need this, right? Um, I guess in that sense, I just want to say is that while um, I don't think I'm maybe investing financially, I would love to be helpful in uh, mentoring you guys because I've worked with several other ed tech companies and if there's any way I could help, uh, especially introduce you to more experts around this area, uh, I would be more than willing to do so. Thank you, sir. That Thank would help you. a lot. We do a lot of work in the fintech ecosystem. We need upskilling and reskilling. And that niche, I don't think you're going to find competition for. I don't think just any learning management system is going to fix that problem. And you have the opportunity to kind of come in and own that mm, ecosystem, wow. which uh, we can expose you to. Wow. Um, from my end, um, I don't think I'm the right investor because to be honest with you, I'm a big fan of face-to-face -face learning. But I find it very interesting and if I may just advise, um, I think you guys can focus on corporations, focus yeah. on um, like B2B, but in this case corporations, yes, not yes. too broad. And um, just like Francis, I'm more than willing to help. Oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah so um, these guys just give you a ton of revenue opportunities and I'm loving you guys as entrepreneurs. I'm willing to write a $10,000 personal check as an angel investor in your company for 1% of the business. I just think there's a ton of opportunities for you guys. You guys are super smart and uh, have basically stepped out of academia role and actually are taking action and I just want to support it. And then what I can bring to the table uh, is uh, <laughs> I want to build learn and earn opportunities. <laughs> learn and earn a campaign is something that we have at Coins. I think a lot of the programs you have um, are actually much more localized than some of the international content that I've seen across. So I think I would love to sort of, you know, get involved in your, uh, in your business as well. Thank you, sir. Thank you everyone for all your offers. And we know that that's new in the industry. We are gonna need a lot of wisdom and uh, help from you guys. So thank you. Sir, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Sir, thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much. We actually got an offer from Wei Zhao at 10,000 US dollars, uh, an angel investment. And another thing is Mr. Brad offered us an opportunity to uh, capitalize the fintech market. Since we're new, we, we don't have any identity yet because the market is so large. But right now, I think we have somewhere to go to. And if we're going to focus on fintech, I think we're going to have a lot of opportunities there. So I'm, I'm curious, what made you jump into that like that? No, it's just... So, yeah, um, listening to us, he made a decision. We sold him on yeah, the you guys sold him. Yeah, it was just quiet, and then you yes, know. You guys have yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I'll take my two percent carry now. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Yeah. No, you got you guys have like you know like there's gonna be a mentor here. You're gonna have yeah. like you know like yeah. like a mentor there. I mean, you got I was basically see a ten million revenue opportunity there, right? You know. They have customers. Yeah, they have they customers. Yeah, look, look at customers. look at what your existing customers yeah. are actually using. And your you tools for. Them, yeah, yeah. yeah, and then if they develop these modules, theoretically you can sort of apply content just through modules, right? Like it's basically you take things from paper and you modulize it online. Yeah. I mean, right. Essentially that's right. kind of yeah. the position that they're making. Next time on The Final Pitch, we meet the woman leading the movement to make our country into a digital Pilipinas, Amor Maklang. And day one of the pitches continues. My name is Nico of Ride Radar. I'm Kyle Salvador of LX Studio Labs. If coins were to invest, like what can you offer us? For what you're asking, your business doesn't seem scalable. This to me is like a times 10. It's, it's even more than that. It's probably like a times 100 to your business. 